Hi there, my name is Mark Stutman. I'm from Folkway Music here in Canada. And uh, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for the feedback on the videos that I made earlier this year during the COVID lockdown. Um, been trying to figure out a way to shoot more videos uh, as they were nicely received, thankfully. And uh, I'll try this one. This is the first vid I've done in a long time, but um, I was just about to glue the neck on this D28 and figured that the process of gluing the neck on a guitar that's having its neck reset might be something that a lot of people have never seen and might be interesting to those of you who don't uh, fix guitars for their for an income. Um, anyways, this is a 1950 D28 and uh, it's a beautiful guitar. It's had a neck reset once before. This is its second neck reset. Um, and I finished all the fitting uh, and this neck is ready to have its self glued back to the guitar. So uh, here is the neck. I had it loose fit just now, but there we go. This is what the dovetail looks like for those of you who haven't seen a dovetail before. And uh, it just fits in there and you snug it up nice and tight like so. And then the guitar should be able to hold itself um, without glue in it as it just did. Um, some people even string guitars up without glue in them if they are, have that much confident, confidence in their, in their dovetail. I think that's a little on the, on the scary or risky side, but. Anyways, this one is done. I've, uh, I've made sure the neck alignment is right this way and this way, both, both orientations. Um, I've, uh, I've cleaned up the landing area here, cleared the finish away from the edges. I've made sure that the fingerboard extension uh, is um, in first contact along the edges uh, so that everything looks nice and clean and tight, is, is flat to match the, the top of the guitar. And, uh, and it's, it's scored a little bit with a toothing iron because I'm gonna be using high glue to glue this together. And high glue likes to have a little extra surface area to grab onto as it, as it sets. Um, there are, once the neck angle is changed this way, the next step is to build out the dovetail uh, with shims and fit it perfectly uh, to the recess. And, um, and so that's been done too. You can see the shims have all been sanded um, to, uh, to fit perfectly in here, which is, I'm going for a perfect joint. I want really good wood to wood contact, uh, A for the, the joint strength, but B for sound transmission. I don't wanna have lots of air in my dovetail in the joint because I think that won't sound as good as, uh, as a full contact. Um, again, I have no way to prove such things, but it's just my hypothesis after fixing guitars for so long. Anyways, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this guitar up back here with this heat lamp. And uh, I'm gonna just warm it up. I'm not putting the heat lamp too close to the guitar because I don't wanna cook it. I don't want the guitar to fall apart. I'm just warming the area up uh, so that um, I have more working time. High glue uh, is kept, it only works when it's warm. It's about 140, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And as soon as it drops down 15, 20 degrees, it doesn't stick. <laughs> so it's important for it to be nice and warm. So that's gonna heat up over there. I have the body here and I'm gonna heat it up with a, with a blow dryer. Sorry, this is the neck, not the body. I'm gonna heat that up with the blow dryer shortly. But first I thought I'd show you the various bits and pieces I'm gonna use. I have, um, this call right over here says 16 on it, 16 inches, and it has a radius and some cork lining. And this call is going to go right there on the body fret. So I'm gonna tape it down. A little piece of masking tape. You gotta do all this prep ahead of time so that you're ready to go when the glue is going on. So that call is right there, all right? And then this other call that says 16, uh, has a radius as well. And ultimately when it's in clamps, that's gonna clamp the fingerboard extension down on the body like that. And then inside the guitar, I have this. This is gonna mount under the top, if you can imagine, like so. And, uh, and this is specific to the bracing in this guitar. Um, What's well, interesting, you can see this says 60s O size guitar. This also works uh, for O size Martins. This is a D28. It works well as well for D28. It won't work for everything. The placement of, of the popsicle brace and this, and this upper sound hole brace change. Um, but strangely, it works for the O size guitar and it works for a D28. 
So thanks, Martin. This, that made my life easier today. I didn't have to make a new one of these for this guitar. And then here's my last call. This is gonna go on the back of the guitar. You can see how it's wedged, and you'll see why that happens in a minute. I do lots of neck resets. Let me just check on this. Yeah, that's feeling good. Um, I do lots of neck resets, and so here's one that's a 10 inch radius. Here's one that's a 14 inch radius um, for other guitars. Here's a, here's a fingerboard call. This is for a short scale 12 fret, 14 inch radius. Here's one for a 12 fret that's a 20 inch radius. So I've made all these things over time and, and I can just grab, grab the one that I need for the particular guitar I'm working on. Here's one I use a lot. This is the 10 inch Gibson 19 fret, 24 and three quarter. So any L00, any 14 fret L00, that's the one that I use. Anyways, um, I've got a bunch of these. Some are older, some are newer. I'm here at my home shop. So these ones are all kind of brand new. I've just made them here in this home shop, which is a fairly new addition to my life. Um, I've got my clamps ready, I've got my high glue ready, uh, I've got my guitar heating up, I'm pretty much ready to go. What I'm going to do now, this is not going to translate to video well, but I'm going to take this hair dryer and I'm going to heat this whole thing up. The hair dryer is an incredibly helpful tool when you're working with high glue um, because you want, tools, you want things to be hot. So I use the hair dryer all the time in my shop. When I'm going to glue a crack, I heat the crack up. When I'm going to glue a brace on a guitar, I stick the the hair dryer inside the body of the guitar and warm the whole thing up. I warm the top of the guitar where that brace is going to be. The longer you have to use your high glue, the better a job you're going to get. Uh, I really want things to stick, particularly inside a guitar where you're working with your hand in a guitar and you don't have a lot of time. It's nice to use the hair dryer um, to buy yourself a little bit of extra time as well. And then when I do cleanup um, on the inside of a guitar, I'll use water to clean up all this, squeeze out high glue, or maybe a drip that landed on the back of the guitar or something. So I'll clean that up with water, and then the hair dryer inside the guitar makes quick work of drying it up, and, make, and I can see quickly if I've done a good enough job cleaning up. I don't want to leave any trace that I was in there. I like seeing a, a, a brace that's re-glued without really any or much evidence that, that there was somebody that actually did that once before. Uh, and that, that's a pretty handy tool. Anyways, I'm going to just take a minute and warm this up here. So, this is the, the not very exciting part of the video. It would be much more exciting if this was a hair salon. I'm sorry, it's not. I'll warm this all up in here. Well, let's go wrong. I'm checking this too. This feels great. This is just about ready. I'll keep going. While this is warming up, I'm checking my high glue. That's my high glue right there. It's a fresh, a fresh batch of high glue, nice and watery thin. I sometimes will use previously heated high glue on a neck reset, just to uh, just to reduce the strength of the high glue because you want your neck to be able to come off again for the next person. This is almost ready. Okay, that's ready to roll. I'll turn my heat lamp off. Here's my guitar. It's, it's warm, it's not hot. Um, so I'm gonna stick this wedge call now on the back of the guitar with some tape. I'm moving quickly, but it's not a race. Um, I, it's, not, it's not like the guitar is gonna heat down in a second. Wood is a really good insulator, so it holds its heat nicely. Um, but anyways, I still wanna move somewhat quickly. Um, I've, uh, I used chalk to fit the neck, so I've made sure the chalk has been cleaned out of the joint. Um, one just quick look, make sure there's no dust or anything, any funny business going on there. And then I'm going to take the hair dryer again. I'm just going to warm up the pocket. Like this. Just warm it up.
to do it. Next, I'll grab some some uh, paper towel. I have that at the ready. And I'm going to now, everything's good? Yeah, this is good, that's good. All right, now I'm gonna put some glue. First on the tongue. Just get it on there. You kinda of wanna go fast at this point. I'm making sure I, I'm, I'm making sure not to put glue on the cheeks of the heel because that makes it difficult for the next person to get it out. Doesn't have to be a thing of beauty. Just get it on there. And then I put the neck in. I squash it down with my hands. Then I take a significant clamp that has some, some padding here to help it not scratch the guitar. I set it on there and clamp it. And before I clamp it tight, I put this paper towel right here to catch any high glue drips. Make sure I'm nice and lined up. Like that. And then once this is clamped, this is the really important part. I just make sure that everything is lined up just right. I want to make sure the heel is tight at the back, tight at the front, make sure I didn't glue it in any kind of funny way. You can see, uh, where's the camera? So that's what it looks like. All right, so there we go, that's done. I'll stick this paper towel in here. The next bit, I take this call, this special call for the inside, just hold it there. The other call for the top, I put it where it needs to go. And then I had, I like this clamp, it's a step over clamp. I put that there. The vocabulary is pretty intense for this, eh? I put that there. Anyways, it's centered basically. And then I tighten this down and the glue will squeeze out. Uh, so I will quickly grab a paper towel as that tightens. This is my glue cleaning tool. It's just a little triangle of maple and I quickly get that squeeze out. I don't want it hanging out. I don't want to glue my calls to the guitar. And so if that squeeze out is there, uh, that could happen. So I clean it off pretty quick. I'm also cleaning off whatever squeezes out the side of the fingerboard extension. I put, a, I put some extra glue this time because because of the video, I knew that it would take me longer to do what I normally do. And if I have more glue on there, I have more thermal mass and so the glue's gonna not cool down quite as fast. And so, uh, so I put some extra, so I'm dealing with more squeeze out than I normally deal with, which is a little bit on the comical side. Anyways, once I get the most, the, the, the bulk of it down, I'll take a, a smaller thing, a little piece of gauze here, a little gauze pad, and I'm gonna just clean out this hard to get at area right here at the front of the fingerboard extension and by the sound hole and make sure that I got nothing on the edge of my sound hole. Hide glue is pretty crazy stuff. As it dries, it shrinks and it grabs onto whatever it's sticking, like the whatever it's on. And you can use hide glue, like in old times when they etched glass, they often would score everything and then throw hide glue on there and let it set and the hide glue would pull it so hard that it would actually etch the glass. Uh, it would actually rip the glass apart. So if you leave a drop of high glue on your finish of your guitar, um, you can create a little crater uh, where the high glue grabs at the lacquer, which is not something you really want to have happen on your ten thousand dollar nineteen fifty D twenty eight. Anyways, the last thing I'll do this is this is probably not a necessary step on this guitar because the fit is really good. Um, however, I will put these two little quick grip clamps right on the corners, the front corners. And uh, I usually will get a little bit of extra squeeze out, which I have here, which is nice. I like seeing, squeeze out is your friend as, as, a, as a guitar repair person. You wanna see a tiny bit of squeeze out to make sure that you don't have a joint that's starved of glue. And um, I don't wanna see a ton of squeeze out because that, that's a mess. That could make for disastrous <laughs> results. Um, but a little bit of squeeze out uh, is, it just tells you that you've done things well. And so I'm happy about that. So I've done that, and then I'm gonna just, once again, visually check around the heel, make sure A, I don't have squeeze out coming out the cheeks, which I shouldn't because I didn't put glue on the cheeks. You wanna not put glue on the cheeks of your neck. And, uh, and then I'm also just checking the fit to make sure that it looks good. Fit looks great, looks just like it did when I was, um, when I was fitting it. So the, the last thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clean out the last of this high glue now that I've got time, uh, just from the sides of the neck. 
just a bit of water and a, and a soft cloth. Just to, a little wet water, a little wet water, a little warm water. And, uh, and that'll just clear off the extra high glue that's there that I don't want to see when it dries. It's so much easier to clean it off when it's wet than when it's dry. So, uh, so this is what I'm doing right now. I know you can't see at this very angle, but you're gonna have to deal with that. And uh, almost done, and then I'll show you what's going on here. Just one moment. Hang tight. This is again, not the most exciting part of this video. But that's what you get for getting me, watching me actually do my job. Shooting videos of doing your job, of actually doing guitar repair, are really, really hard to do. I really tip my hat to those folks that are out there that are actually able to shoot repair videos themselves. I could probably do this if I had a little video crew, but there is nobody in this room but me. And uh, that makes it very difficult to shoot stuff. So one camera, one iPhone, one tripod, no studio lighting, and we're done. Anyways, I'm just about done here. That's good. That's clean enough. All right, so here is my neck with the clamps on it. You can see that's the setup with the clamps. All righty. That's what the neck looks like clamped on there. That side. This side, you can see the call inside the sound hole. See that? Don't drop the guitar. I don't usually hold guitars with clamps on them. Anyways, that's what it looks like. Um, finally, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this tape, carefully peel the tape off of here. This is really low tack tape that I've used the same, the same 3M tape for 20 years. Um, I'm very used to it. On new finish, it can actually orange peel your finish. Um, it won't do that on this guitar if I, unless I left it there for a month. However, I still don't want to leave tape on the finish, so I've taken that tape off. And uh, check on my clamps for tightness. And I'm done. There we go. So I will let this sit now overnight. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna actually close the camera and head off over to Folkway now. But um, this uh, this will sit here today, and I'll come home tonight. And uh, I probably will just set it aside and work on a different guitar. Um, and uh, tomorrow I'll take the clamps off. And uh, I don't like to string guitars up. Uh, so, you know, within a day of doing a reset, you can. I could probably string it up tonight safely, but I just don't want to. I want that glue to be seriously hard and crystallized um, before I go putting string tension on this guitar. I still have to do a refret on this guitar, um, so I'll probably do that uh, in a day or two, and then the guitar will be ready to rock and roll once I get a new saddle in there. Um, but anyways, that's, uh, that's the process of putting a neck back on a guitar. There was a lot that you didn't see before I started with the video. Um, in terms of, well, a neck, well, neck removal and then neck fitting. Um, and then um, this guitar uh, had some cracks along the edge of the fingerboard um, that were fixed and touched up before I started this whole thing. So there was a, there was a whole bunch of fiddling with that. Um, I should say that call that I put inside the guitar, it's not just for clamping together, it's wider than the fingerboard. And I want that there so that when you clamp the extension, you don't accidentally uh, exacerbate cracks that might be hiding along the edge of the fingerboard. You always have to assume when uh, a neck is off a guitar that there's a good possibility that there's cracks along the fingerboard edge. And um, this guitar, I didn't notice these cracks until I took the fingerboard extension off, but they were there. Um, incidentally, the person that was did the previous neck reset attempted to fix them and they that repair failed. So I, I've re-repaired re them and there's a little tiny touch up. But the width of that inside call um, supports those cracks when you tighten this clamp down to make sure that those cracks don't reopen. So it's seriously important. Once this is all done, I'm going to add a bit of reinforcement to those cracks so they never open again. And, uh, and then this guitar will be ready for its next, well, hopefully 30 years before it needs to have that work done to it again. Anyways, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit about how to put a neck on a guitar. Again, everybody, not everybody, but most repair people have their own sort of way that they do this everyone if like everyone's evolved their own techniques over time and this is the way i do it other people do it differently um as long as the end result is good structurally sound clean 
aligned properly and undoable by the next repair person, you can do it however you want to do it. This is just the way I've chosen to do it and the system that I've gotten used to over time and it works really well for me. Um, but, uh, but this is no, by no means the be all end all way to reset a neck. It's just the way I do it and I hope that you've found something of interest in there. Anyways, thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll try to shoot another video sometime in the near future, but, um, but until then, thanks very much. Thanks for, very much for your support uh, of all these videos. I really appreciate it. And uh, everyone stay well and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Take care.